influence everything. And this is a perfect time to spiritualize what God has done for us. When we're talking about memorials, and of course we saw the white tombstones of those in, in Arlington, and we've got them right here in, in the city of Little Rock. If you've ever gone over and visited the, the uh, memorial, the graveyard, uh, where all of the white uh, memorial stones are in Little Rock, you'll know what I'm talking about. But those, those speak volumes by just looking at them. They tell us of lives that were given for freedom for the United States of America. And thank God for freedom. Thank God we've still got freedoms that the rest of the world does not know about or experience. Thank God for that. But when we spiritualize that, and we did that this morning, we saw the white crosses, and then we saw the cross. We saw Christ depicted on the cross of Calvary. There is no memorial like that memorial. That is the one memorial that has set all of us free. Amen? You see, we were all sentenced to die. There is a battle raging right here this morning in the lives of every person that's here, and there is a battle raging in the lives of our children, in the lives of our grandchildren, in the lives of those that we hold dear and love. There's a war going on. And we've got to understand that to win that war, we've got to have a superior force. We've got to have superior weapons. We've got to have the ability to outmaneuver the enemy. We've got to have the wherewithal, and then we've got to have the one, the general, who has never lost a battle fighting for us. Amen? And so when we think about what is going on in our lives and what has gone on in the lives of those that have come before us, we've got to understand the importance of what happened at Calvary. We've got to understand the importance of what happened on the day of Pentecost. We've got to understand the importance of what happened in preserving the Word of God and handing that down to us today. Without that and remembering that, we couldn't do what we're doing today. We wouldn't be able to fight against the powers that are stronger than we are. That, that overwhelm us. But thank God we've got the Lord of hosts on our side. Thank God we've got the general, the commander in chief on our side who has never lost a battle and he won it victoriously at Calvary and on resurrection morning and on that day that he ascended into heaven, he is fighting our battle for us today. And if we're talking about memorials, I think it's fitting today to remember the battles that he has fought for us. Scripture says that he went into the inner part of the earth, victoriously got the keys of death, hell, and the grave, and came out of that victorious. Now what does that mean? That means that you don't have to die without hope. Amen? That means that the grave has no hold on you. That means that when we fall asleep, when we draw our last breath, that there's hope in eternity for us. Amen? And so death is only a moment in time that ushers us into eternity. In fact, I've said it many times before, the Bible says it like this, it's a sting. And so when you draw your last breath, if you're ready, you're going to be in the presence of the Lord immediately. In fact, I don't believe there'll be any pain associated with that moment in time. I believe when we draw our last breath, we're not going to have time to even have a pain enter our body. 
we're gonna be in the presence of the Lord. It pays to live for God. It pays to live for God. And of course, the reason that we can do that is because he fought the battle for us and he won the victory for us and we need never to forget that he has the power over death. He has the power over death. Why? Because he's the first fruit of resurrection. Resurrection power was initiated on the day that he rose from the dead and has been handed down to us. And so those of you that have the baptism of the Holy Ghost living in your life, that's the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. The baptism of the Holy Ghost in your life this morning is the same spirit that rose Christ from the dead, the scripture says. And that is the spirit that if you have when you leave this life, that's the spirit that is going to raise you from the dead. What the scripture says, right? The same spirit that rose Christ from the dead shall quicken your mortal bodies. By that same spirit, you'll be changed in the moment and the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. And we will be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. What is that talking about? That's talking about a victory that has been won at Calvary. That's talking about a victory that has been won at the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's talking about a victory that has finalized. There is no battle in the sense that we have claimed the victory through Jesus Christ. I know we fight the devil every day, but why do we claim the victory? Because we've got victory living inside of us. If you got the Holy Ghost here today, you got all the victory you need. You don't need any more victory than that. I know it's a struggle, I know it's a battle, I know it's a fight, but hey, we are victorious through the name of Jesus Christ and the victory that he has won ultimately for us. So don't, walk around, down and out. Claim what is rightfully yours this morning. We're remembering that today. I said at the very beginning, we forget so many times what we need to remember and we remember what we need to forget. It's, it's, it's the devil's work to bring things to our minds that we need to forget. And it's the devil's work to cause us to forget what has happened at Calvary. And so we are remembering again today in this Memorial Day service what has happened not only in the giving of the lives of those for our country to give us the freedoms that we have, but we are also remembering today the freedom that we have in Christ and what he has done to claim that freedom for us at Calvary. I'm gonna end by saying this. Freedom is never free. That song said it. Freedom is not free. How do you get what I'm talking about here today? You gotta pay a price for it. You can't buy it with money. There's not enough gold in the world to purchase it, not enough silver in the world to purchase it. Just like there's not enough to purchase your natural freedom, there's not enough to purchase your spiritual freedom. Amen? And so what we've got to do to have that freedom is to lose our freedom at the expense of gaining the freedom that comes in him. How do you do that? Peter stood up on the day of Pentecost and when they asked him, what do we need to do? He said, repent. What, what is repentance? Repentance is laying down your old life. It's laying down your old habits. It's saying, God, I can't control my life. I gotta have your help. I'm asking you to forgive me of what I've done and what I'm doing and set me free from that and give me a new direction in my life. I wanna turn around and walk away from that. I wanna walk in newness of life. I want to repent of my sins so I can have a new life. And you know what? He paid the price so that he can forgive you and you can walk out of here free from sin. Repentance is not difficult. It's simply dying to yourself and dying to your old ways 
And then Peter said, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of those sins that you've repented of. They are put under the blood. They are remitted. They are forgotten as far as Christ is concerned. I'm glad that his blood that he sacrificed at Calvary can do the impossible. It can literally cause Christ to cover our sins to the point that he doesn't remember them anymore. Isn't that an amazing thing? A God that has never forgotten anything forgets our sins because they're under the blood. That's the power of the cross. Thank God for the cross. And then Peter said, the wonderful experience of the baptism of the Holy Ghost will come flooding into your life with the evidence of speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God gives the utterance. Let's stand. Aren't you glad for freedom this morning? Aren't you glad that you've been set free by the power of the cross and the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Aren't you glad we've got an opportunity on this Memorial Day to memorialize the greatest memorial that has ever been, and that is the memorial of the cross and the resurrection? Aren't you glad you've been a part and a partaker of that? If you've got the Holy Ghost here this morning, what a wonderful time to remember what Christ has done for you. I wonder if there's anybody here today you want to raise a flag of, and a banner of surrender to him. You want to exchange your life for a better life. You want to walk out of here under a different flag this morning. You want to walk out of here victorious over death, hell, and the grave with a hope beyond this life. We're going to sing a chorus. And while we do this, we're going to open the altars. I think it's appropriate this morning for anybody that wants to change their allegiance to be able to do that before we leave out of here today. So while Sister Hannah's singing, Sister Kayla's singing, why don't you, if you need the power of the baptism of the Holy Ghost in your life to help you overcome, why don't you just make your way to the altar down here? We'll pray with you this morning. Sing it. Hallelujah. You have won, you won it me. all for me. You purchased it at Death hell. could not hold you down. You are the risen king. You're seated in majesty. Yeah.